You're listening to the Hidden Killers Podcast. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Retired FBI Special Agent Jennifer Coffendapper is with us right now as we break more down on the case against Rex Hewerman being called the Long Island serial killer, the Gilgo Beach killer. He is now being looked at in at least one murder case and potentially four others. The police and the DNA lab conducting a direct comparison against Hewerman's DNA against her New Jersey mom, Victoria Camera. This being a direct comparison, is this them doing just their due diligence and their job or does it mean something more when this kind of a comparison is being conducted? Well, if you'll recall, they just got the motion granted to collect his DNA through swabbing. So that profile is likely, I don't know if it's been completely determined, the exact profile. In other words, every detail of the profile, right? We already had a mitochondrial profile that could be compared. So where are they in the process of the complete DNA profile of that swab? I don't know that answer. I have not seen that publicly yet. So I do have a question. A, are they comparing it to his DNA swab DNA, or are they comparing it to the mitochondrial DNA? Both are comparable, but obviously one is just more of a complete profile. So why are they particularly comparing it in this manner? Is it because they are not able to put it in CODIS yet. Remember, New York is one of those states that says it can't go in CODIS until after a conviction. If that's where we're at, it makes sense. And the chief said it very clearly. He said, just because I can't put it in CODIS doesn't mean I can't compare it to other known possible victims. So that's why they're doing it in this way directly to each of the victims, I believe, because they can't compare it via the CODIS route yet. If they are able to make a direct comparison and a match, granted it's not in CODIS yet, but this match is done in uh, a different state, uh, whether it be uh, in uh, Nevada and Las Vegas or be in South Carolina, where there's other suspected possible ties to Hewerman, could it then be entered into CODIS because the testing is being done in a different state for a crime that was committed in a different state? which would have different laws as to when and where that information can be entered? That's such an interesting question. And I think certainly if there's a match, it could be by that state rule and law, by their state laws. You know, New York is very unique. But I do want to know, Tony, and I have again, I have not seen this answer, if because the judge granted that they could swab, which is exactly you and I talked about it. And we thought that they would allow that because there's probable cause to believe he committed those crimes and probable cause to look at the DNA that was in his mouth. That all made a lot of sense. But did that override the New York CODIS rule? Yeah, I don't think it did. But the states individually are responsible for entering their DNA that are involved in their cases into CODIS by their set of laws. So I would believe that they would be able to. Is it really an antiquated law? To me, it seems rather bizarre that you would wait till a conviction to run that through CODIS to see if there's other crimes. Wouldn't that end up actually helping con- help to convict someone if we were able to look and say, oh my gosh, look, he's connected to 10 other murders, whether it be him or anyone in, in that situation like this. Why wait until after the conviction, especially if they were not to be convicted and then years later convicted of a crime and we look back and go, oh, well, we could have known this 10 years ago if we just ran the damn test. Well, exactly. I mean, this is the whole reason why states have adopted that you can swab on arrest. Yeah. You don't even need a warrant. It's incident to arrest. It's just like fingerprinting. Not all states, though. And you see in the Brian Koberger case, they actually went a step further that they didn't really have to do and got a search warrant. So the minute they arrested him, they had a search warrant in hand to take his DNA. And I think that was the perfect thing to do in abundance of caution. Yeah. But I guess my point is your point. Why in the world would you wait until a conviction 
to me, when you arrest somebody, it should be just like a fingerprint because the whole premise of fingerprinting somebody was to identify them at the time of arrest because at the time of arrest, you have probable cause, whether it's probable cause by complaint, indictment, and information, or you saw the criminal activity yourself as a police officer and you arrested due to what you saw. No matter what, there was probable cause. Print the person. That's what we do. Now, because of technology changes and developments, we should do DNA for everyone. New York's is antiquated at best. How does something like that get changed? Is that something that would have to be done in the state legislature? How would something like that get some modern reform to it? That's what they're going to have to do is really get a bill and then get a law on the books that changes this. I know New York tends to be a very, you know, liberal state in terms of their laws and social policies in some regards, but this is something, in my opinion, that comes down to a matter of public safety. And but for the genetic genealogy and the DNA comparisons, Tony, we would have a killer still out there that would have possibly killed again. So, you know, to me, when you're talking about these kinds of cases, you have to level up your ability, give law enforcement the ability to identify these people specifically through their DNA. Sure, that that makes sense. The Rex Sherman, and this is not a shock to anyone, he's in an isolated area, primarily for his own safety right now, not really able to talk to, to much of anyone, gets this hour a day of exercise, but again, that is also isolated. When it comes to getting information out of potential murderers here, the suspects, is it is that an antiquated idea in itself? Would you possibly get more by having some be social with other human beings, whether it be other inmates or what have you, is it always the right idea today to keep them uh, not able to speak to anyone? Uh, granted, the security is the big issue here, but I, I am wondering if in that window where they are incarcerated, if you could actually get more info, confessions, or just extra pieces uh, that could be used in the investigation and eventually in a conviction. Well, it's such a good question because when you look at all the quote unquote jailhouse confessions where individuals, they're lonely, they're talkers. A lot of times people who commit these kinds of crimes are narcissistic and they like to sort of brag about uh, the crimes they commit or dangle it out there. It happens. So you're right. A law enforcement is, in fact, probably missing some opportunity when they sequester the people. But the in the balance, Tony, is not only the safety of other inmates, but as probably a higher threshold is the safety of Rex Heerman in this case, or Brian Koberger in this case. Can you imagine the publicity individuals would get for killing him? Look at Jeffrey Dahmer. You sure. know, he was put into or taken out of isolation and he was murdered, you know, by an individual and, yeah. and that made headlines for weeks. So these incarcerated individuals would probably be all but too happy to be a part of killing somebody as famous as Brian Koberger or Rex Heerman at this point. So the in the balance just tips too mm. far and they have to keep those individuals safe and the individuals around them. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi.